Good everyone, members of the media, appreciate you joining us on our Zoom conference today. As many of you are aware, um, earlier today, the department uh, released information on some budgetary actions that we have to take for fiscal year 21. Um, I knew then that many of you would want to talk with Director Lyons and uh, gain some more insight. So I'd like to thank him for being a part of our Zoom conference this afternoon. Uh, he has some opening remarks for to share with you. And after that, then our moderator, uh, Grant Dovey, will take um, quest uh, questions from members of the media. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you to Director Lyons, and I will turn it over to him. Thank you, Michael. Uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, today's a tough day. Um, it's always tough to, to share bad news with good people. Um, the past few months have been the most uncertain times that any of us have ever experienced. Uh, it's impossible to project, you know, what the next few months will bring. Uh, this pandemic has given us a chance to take a great in-depth review of our current and future budgets and to say to ourselves, what do we really need here? Like many institutions, we've made exploring effective financial models as a top priority as we navigate these uncertain times. Athletic departments are, are having to deal with the economic downturn, how that will impact our donors, as well as our, our future ticket revenue. I don't believe anybody is arguing that the next few years will be very different than what we've known in the past. Everybody's having to think real hard how things are going to look in the near future compared to how things looked 60 to 90 days ago. We are certainly not alone in this. Tough decisions had to be made. Uh, I have a responsibility. We have a responsibility as a department to this university to run a physically sound unit. As the days carried on since the middle of March uh, when the pandemic you know, first became a, a major issue, it became obvious that action was needed. Salary reductions and furloughs are never easy, but with the projected $5 million short shortfall, they were absolutely necessary. Roughly a third of our budget is salaries, and that was a place that we needed to start first. We will continue looking at other areas of our budget to make sure that we are exploring everything that's possible on the table from a budgetary standpoint moving forward from today through July 1st through the year uh, 2021 for the physical year. The impact is we're trying to, to, to have is, is trying to minimize the effects on our student athletes and their college experience. Every employee in our department will play a role in reducing our overall shortfall, whether through salary reduction or furloughs, every employer will be helping us through these tough times. We're also in hand in hand with the university as, as we approached these discussions and re these reviews of, of our budgets. Uh, obviously, you know, we're here today to talk about the athletic department, but I think you also saw the news that there's discussions and furloughs that happened on campus as well. You know, reflecting back on this and then closing, you know, we can sit around and we can say that we were dealt a bad situation with COVID-19, but that doesn't solve anything. Uh, we, we have to have a solution is to, to be action oriented in dealing with this pandemic. The response and decisions were needed. We have a strong department with good employees. I'm proud of what and who we are, and, we're, and we'll definitely get through this, and we'll be stronger in the long run. I'm thankful and grateful for our department's understanding and uh, cooperation as we move through this uh, uh, budget reductions and furloughs. I can tell you that our student athletes and coaches want nothing more than to return and, and start preparing for the upcoming season. Our student athletes want nothing more than to return to campus safely and make our, our state proud. Lastly, I, I will tell you that I still remain optimistic that we will play football in the fall, along with our other fall sports. 
Uh, the university, along with the athletic department, has various teams being put together uh, for uh, return to campus, return to play, what that's going to look like. Uh, also, from the NCAA and conference standpoint, we continue discussions what that's going to be in the future. So first and foremost is the safety and health of our student athletes, our fans, our, our employees. And uh, as we can continue to navigate the uncertain times, that's going to be our top priority as we move forward. So with that, I will open it up for questions, Grant. Go ahead and use the uh, raise hand. And the first one we have here is from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So Shane, you, you talked about furloughs and also some that may not be brought back. I mean, the number who who won't be brought back, have they been told of their fate? And, uh, you know, are they administrators, coaches? Who are those people? You know, I, I will share with you, Greg, that, you know, that's an ongoing process. Uh, it, it's not coaches, it's, a, it's administrators and staff. Uh, you know, that's something that some of those have been notified and we're continuing to work through, you know, the process with that. So, um, you know, obviously we, we also put a, a freeze on any of our future hirings as well as uh, those openings that we currently had, which were about six openings that we will not fill this year as well. Go ahead. If anyone has any questions, please use the uh, raise hand feature. Next question from Kevin Kender. Go ahead, Kevin. Shane, you mentioned that the uh, budget deficit you're looking at was five million, and that these moves would account for about three million. What are the next areas you're looking at, and is there like a time frame you're looking at? Is that this fiscal year? Does that go into next fiscal year? It's a combination, Kevin, uh, of both. You know, we're, we're still not sure exactly for the fiscal year 20, you know, what the, the ending result will be, obviously, uh, without having competitions, uh, you know, in the spring. Uh, we, we had a reduction, you know, from the conference and what that's exactly going to look like because of the canceled men's basketball tournament, the cancellation of the NCAA tournament. Uh, so we're still, you know, crunching those numbers to see where we fall at the end of this fiscal year and knowing going into 21 uh, what that looks like. You know, from our budgetary standpoint, the, the ticket deadline is also important, Kevin, because we moved that from May 1st to June 1st. The ticket, uh, I mean, the, the donor aspect of that applies to the 20 academic year and the ticket revenue applies to the 21 uh, academic year. So you kind of have a little bit of a split there and moving that date to June 1, we still don't have a clear picture what that's going to look like. So, you know, what we're exploring is other areas within our budget that, uh, that we can look at to potentially cut some of our expenses. You know, some of those ideas and, and uh, so I'll use some of our Olympic sports as an example. We've gone back at look at scheduling and taking a look at non-conference you know, what can we do, you know, from bus trips as opposed to, to flying, you know, on planes. So what's more regional type of competition that we can get as opposed to, to flying to different spots. So that's just one area that we'll be focusing on as we move forward. But, you know, our next step is, is looking overall, you know, at the, the overall operating budget as a whole to see where possible cuts can come about. Uh, Next question is from Justin Jackson. Go ahead, Justin. Hello, Mr. Lyons. How are you doing? Good, Justin. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, um, kind of a question here for, for, for moving forward, and, and I'm sure options moving forward, uh, kind of, you know, looking outside of the box kind of thing. I know there was a story out a few years or a few months ago about the, maybe looking at the naming rights uh, for the Coliseum. I, I, I wonder if that is still moving forward and maybe for, for other uh, venues that, that uh, WVU has, um, how much of that becomes uh, maybe more to the forefront now and, and how much could stuff like that uh, help uh, moving forward? No, absolutely, Justin. And, you know, the, the naming rights opportunities uh, and new revenue streams are always a top priority. So to answer your question, yes, you know, we're continuing to explore in the naming rights of, of the Coliseum. We continue to explore the naming rights of, of the ballpark and, and other uh, facilities that we may you know, be able to, to, to name. So revenue streams are a big thing of, 
you know, what, what can we do? Obviously, the, the biggest revenue streams are with our donors and with our, our um, ticket revenue, but we also have to, to think outside the box and look at, you know, future revenue streams that could be a possibility as well. Your next question here comes from Derek Red. Go ahead, Derek. Thanks for, for taking thanks for taking the time today. Um, speaking of revenue streams, when you're looking at the revenue that you're getting from your TV contracts, that usually that where football drives the bus on that. In your position as the uh, chair of the oversight committee, have you been talked? Have you talked to folks around the country, other administrators? Because I've seen a lot of hypotheses that come out, you know, do it in October, split the schedule, do it in the spring. Have you, has there been any growing consensus on what football would look like this fall? And if it doesn't get played, how crushing of a blow does that become? Yeah, great question, Derek. I mean, I, I think that, you know, as I said in my statement, you know, we're, we're planning and, and our goal is to play football on September 5th or August 29th, technically, we, I think, yes, seven games on August 29th. Our, our focus right now, uh, really both from the conference as well as the football oversight of the NCAA is, you know, the return to practice. What, what does that look like? You know, what protocols do we need to, to put in place, you know, both that meet the, the local, uh, you know, state, federal guidelines on testing and, and, and what do we have to do? So, the first step that we were taking is, you know, what does that return? How long is that that time period going to be? And I think we're looking at anywhere from four to six weeks before the first competition that we have to have the athletes be able to be back back on campus and be able to train. The next step would be then what what does the season look like? And I think we're all moving forward at this point. And, and every day there's new information, there's new data to say, do we have to make adjustments? But our focus right now is starting on time on August 29th and, and September, September 5th specifically for us, is that the, that's the date that we're focusing on. But I think you know we would not do ourselves justice without having other contingency plans of looking at uh, you know, an altered season of maybe only conference games only, uh, do you have potentially an un you know an interrupted season where you play half in the in the fall and the pandemic and the virus uh, you know spikes again and you have to stop and you know what does the spring look like? So all those things uh, are in discussion. You know I can tell you that we meet as a football oversight on a weekly basis. Uh, the conference we're we're talking probably two and three times a, a week on, on issues such as this, along with the commissioner talking with our our presidents on a, on a weekly basis. So, you know, there's, there's just a lot of moving parts right now and, and unfortunately no answers. Uh, it's just not a matter of flipping a switch. Um, you know, a question that you, we get all the time too, and you, you've seen here in the last couple of weeks, does, does everybody have to be back in order to play football? Um, different states are going to reopen at different times. What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, so, you know, you may have some situations where some institutions aren't back uh, because of their state regulations in the fall. What, what does that mean? So we don't have all the answers to those things yet, but those are, are questions as we get closer. I, I think it's still too a little bit too premature to start coming up one way or another saying we're going to play football or not. I think as the time gets closer, we'll, we'll have more intelligence to tell us from the medical ex experts and scientists of here's what you need to do in order to play football. And as I mentioned, I, I think I'm very optimistic in, in talking with those individuals that there's a great possibility that we can do that. Your next question here comes from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. Shane, you had a lot of uh, renovations either ongoing or planned. So what, what, what are those continues? Do you have some that you say, we got to wait and put these on pause? Where do you stand with that? Yeah, great question, and Greg, and, and I'm glad you asked it because it's very important. The, the, the projects that we are continuing to work on have nothing to do with our, our budgets, you know, for this year or for next year. So, you know, the, the uh, using the Pushkar renovations, the operation, uh, operations center, though those, those are gifted funds as well as future 
you know, bond funds that we will work through. So we are not stopping, you know, constructions from there. The uh, Olympic sport weight room, uh, we were very fortunate to get a nice gift from the Ruby Trust. Again, those are specifically earmarked for that project and I can't use that money for anything else. And then the Coliseum, uh, the, the renovation of the seats or removal of the seats, the new seats is also a gift that's earmarked specifically for that. And the uh, two video boards, one at uh, Mountaineer Field and, and the one here at uh, the Coliseum are also uh, earmarked through our agreement with IM, or Learfield IMG. So those funds are, are specifically to be used for video boards. So all the projects will continue because those monies have already been earmarked specifically for those projects and they have nothing to do with our fiscal year 20 or fiscal 21 budgets. Next question from Justin Jackson. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, Shane, uh, something I was trying to get answered through the Big 12 and never really, you know, really got through to anyone concerning this upcoming football season and the TV revenue, I guess, contracts or whatever. Is there an X amount of, I mean, I think the last couple of years, you guys, Big 12 has been dealing out like with 30, 32, 33 million or something like that last year. Is there X yeah. amount of games you guys have to play this year in order to receive what would be conceived a full share uh, of next year's TV contracts? Or does it just have to be conference games or does it have to be 10 games or eight games? Uh, I'm not sure what exactly what that number would be. I don't, I, I don't know if anyone does. So. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Great question. Uh, but we don't, we, we've talked about that in, in the conferences having uh, discussions uh, and, and along with all other conferences, it, it's based upon, you know, you, you can look at it and say it's based upon having a full season, both in football and basketball. That's where obviously the majority of the, the revenue comes from is, you know, those two sports. Uh, football, you know, in last year we, we, or this coming year, even last year, we'll receive about $36 million from the, the conference. You know, it's roughly a 75-25 a split, football being 75, men's basketball really being the other 25%. Uh, based on, you know, the, the analysis of those contracts. So we really don't have in the contract, there isn't specific language of saying, you know, based on 12 games, based on nine games, based on conference games, uh, if that's so, you know, to, to happen. So I do think if we, if we don't play a full season or if it's a, you know, limited season, that that will have a, a financial impact on, on our television contracts. Uh, next question from Mike Gazaza. Mike, go ahead. Hey, Shane, how are you? Good, Mike, how are you? Good. Um, some time ago, we talked about this uh, rainy day fund that you had and how you can access it for certain things. I can't imagine this was ever on your agenda, but um, how useful has that been and, and or even has it been useful because of the scope, unexpected in nature that this may be? Uh, it's putting a very small... Uh, you know, dent into what we have to do. You know, again, you, you try to prepare for the future and, you know, try to look at, you know, unexpected things to come up, Mike. And, and uh, you know, I think in this situation, this has exceeded everything that, you know, I, I ever expected to, to be a, a large sum of things. So, you know, we, we will, you know, look at those things as, a, as part of our budget as a whole. Um, but again, it's, uh, it, it's it's very limited in in you know in the big scope of things and the impact that this is going to have uh, across the board, especially if we don't play football. You know, the big question is is what does that look like for the future? You know, of of, of the department and what what we need to do. So, you know, we, we do have some there, but it's just a matter of you know it's not going to have a coverage of everything that we need to to make sure that we have to to make us whole. Uh, next question here from Greg Hunter. Just a reminder to use the raise hand feature if you have a question. Go ahead, Greg. Shane, you mentioned uh, tickets, uh, deadline pushback, obviously MAC donations continuing. Can you share with us what the, I imagine they're down. So what percentage those are down compared to this point last year? Yeah, it's kind of hard, Greg, to, to really get a, an exact number. We've tried to do it based on weeks out as opposed to the date. Obviously, in the past, it's been May 1st. In the, in the past few years. So we've kind of tried to look at where we were last year, about a month uh, out, 
and it's down. I don't have that number, you know, specifically. It's it's in the 10 to 15 percent range, if I if I'm not mistaken. And most of the time, you know, with a May 1st date, and it's it's the buying habits of uh, our fan base is that when you have that deadline, it usually usually runs up to that deadline when you start having the big you know, spikes in the numbers of tickets uh, sold as you get closer to the deadline. So, you know, it's, it's hard to tell you right now. I, I believe that, you know, roughly in, in years past, we're probably, you know, a few hundred to, you know, well, probably a few hundred down to compared to four weeks out in the past. But the real numbers will start showing here in the, in the coming weeks of what that's going to really look like as we get closer to that June 1st date. Uh, next question from Kevin Kinder. Go ahead, Kevin. And I understand, obviously, the importance and emphasis on football for your other fall sports, especially ones that start early in the semester. Are you planning this? Is this an, kind of an all or nothing thing? Yes, we can play football, so we're going to play soccer and the other ones, or you look at each one individually? What's that process? Yeah, I think, you know, Kevin, we've, we've focused on football uh, across, you know, every league, not only within the Big 12. Uh, because obviously they have some legislation, you know, in itself that they, there's activities that they can do in the summertime compared to the soccers and the cross countries and the volleyballs and the other fall sports. So our, our, our main focus was, you know, looking at football. And then, you know, obviously there's other groups uh, that's, that's looking at the Olympic sports. Um, so as we, you know, reopen and re-socialize in sport, you know, we'll, we'll take those steps of, of looking, trying to bring everybody back. Um, you know, we don't have the full plan yet, but I think it's obviously a stair step that, you know, obviously you'd bring football back, you know, earlier than you would the volleyballs and the soccers, but they're all in the planning stage uh, as we move forward with this. So, you know, football's leading the way, but, you know, obviously those uh, other fall sports are not far behind. Uh, your next question from Justin Jackson. Go ahead, Justin. Uh, Mr. Lyons, uh, two things here, and then the last one's for me. Uh, the announced uh, salary reductions today, uh, is that over the course of just one fiscal year? Uh, do you see, foresee it lasting any longer than that? And number two would be, uh, obviously, there's other uh, coaching contracts that are, are coming up here at the end of this fiscal year. Uh, I think men's basketball assistants, uh, I, I believe, are – do for, for new contracts uh, starting into next fiscal year. Could you give any kind of insight on what it's like trying to go through negotiations at a you know, weird time that, that we're in right now? Yeah, uh, well, for the first of all, the, the reductions are July 1, uh, 2020 through June 30th of 2021. So it is a year is our plan uh, for the, the reductions. And you know that's that's been our plan altogether. And again, I, I have to preface it by saying that you know if we have an altered football season, that could change significantly. You know, for for not only our department but across the country. So, you know, we're looking at you know the budgets and and the reductions on the basis of we're playing football. What that's going to look like, uh, you know, and trying to forecast that. And and from a donor standpoint, ticket standpoint. And, and that's kind of where we have derived, you know, somewhere in that $5 million range uh, with our potential shortfall. Uh, given that we don't play football or if it's altered, that could be, you know, significantly more. So we, we have to play with that as, as we move, you know, through this pandemic. Obviously, from day one, it's been very fluid. And I, I think this is also uh, something that, uh, that, that we continue to, to understand it's fluid as well. But you know, what I have shared with the staff is, you know, it is a one year uh, reduction in, in my hopes and, uh, and, and, you know, that, that, that it will only be for one year as we move forward and, and we get through this storm. Um, the, the coaching contracts, uh, you know, I can share that, you know, it, it will, you know, probably, you know, would not be a multi, you know, we won't be looking at any of our coaches who are up for contracts. Um, I, I don't think we're in a position to do any type of multi-year contracts, uh, you know, as we go through this, not knowing, you know, what the future is going to look like. Um, so, you know, that's something that, 
you know, I'll have to look at as, as we move forward. But, uh, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, right now it, it looks like obviously everybody that's on our staff will be there. It's just the, the multi-year contracts across the board is something we're going to have to take a closer look at. Uh, next question from Mike Kazaza. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Shannon, I just want to clarify one thing too. The um, the people, the reduction in force, I think that was the language. Does that apply to what's people who are already on furlough or is that separate forthcoming? Do those people already know? I wasn't clear on that. And then I had another one if I can follow up. Yeah, the reduction, Mike, in, in, in staff are those not on furlough. Those are above and beyond the furlough. Uh, so those are individual discussions that we'll have. Uh, we had some today, and then those will be some that we'll continue to have in the, in the future as well. Uh, so, yeah, that, so it's, it's people that's currently on, on the staff. If you can describe the conversations you're having, maybe not describe just the nature of what, what the oversight committee, what the tug of war is like when it seems like from every different direction, whether it's a conference or a region of the country or a state or a city, they seem to have an agenda to push us toward a goal line. And here's you and that committee in the middle trying to, I guess, mitigate any type of favor <laughs> in any direction to play this down in the middle. But what is what are the discussions? What are the nature of those those meetings like when, and again, the, it's coming at you from so many different voices and directions. Yeah, it's interesting, Mike, you know, and, and again, I, you know, college athletics is a special place and, you know, we, we all have our own agendas. We all have our own thoughts, but, you know, I think that ultimately we come to the greater good of what's good for college football. And, you know, you, you kind of end up leaving your own personal agendas on the table. And, you know, at the forefront of all of our discussions, as I mentioned earlier, is the health and safety of our student athletes. And so we, we can't lose that as, a, as one of our core values as we move through this. But at the same time, we have to look at, you know, what, you know, the, the, you know, the fairness and the equity aspect of it. Um, and again, you, you mentioned that, you know, states reopening at different times. What does that look like? how close can we get where the fairness and equity aspect remains intact? Um, you know, the, the difficult part is when you get into the, the, the potential competition seasons in some states may not be there. Do, does everybody hold on? Or if you're at a certain number, do, do you start moving, moving forward, uh, you know, without them? So that, that we have yet to really dive into that yet. But I think when we have talked about summer activities, and what that looks like. I think there's been a lot of uniformity across the board that everybody is understanding that it could be a little bit different from in the inequalities that could, could happen over the summer. But at the same time, when it comes to recruiting uh, camps, you know, those type of things that we're all on the same page uh, across the country and, and across every conference, you know, the, the thing that we're, we're working with right now is you know, the voluntary workouts, if campuses start to reopen and you meet your state, local guidelines and, and health department guidelines, what does that look like? And understanding that a few states may be ahead of other states as that, that occurs to happen. And it appears that, you know, not only the committee, but there's some understanding that that could happen uh, across the board, you know, as we move forward, but that's not where the real advantages are, are coming into play. Uh, we'll take one more question here from uh, Greg Hunter. Greg, go ahead. So Shane, this is more about your opinion. Uh, to be a Division I program, you have to have 16 varsity sports, right? And then I know some of the group of five programs have asked for that to be reduced, at least temporarily. Your thoughts on that? I mean, would you think that that is a good temporary idea or would you oppose it? Well, actually, Greg, the, the council – uh, NCA Council a couple of weeks ago reviewed that issue and one thing that was taken off the table of any waivers of, of sports sponsorship. So that is maintaining at 16 sports. Uh, There's some things possibly that's still in discussion about not meeting certain, you know, scholarship limits or contest limits, but the 16 sport sponsorship limit was taken off the table as a blanket waiver. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I voted as, you know, a member of the Big 12, being part of the council, that, that we supported that, that that maintained as a threshold to be a Division I 
member. And, um, you know, so there's not really been the last couple of weeks much discussion, uh, you know, further on that piece of it, understanding that some sports do, uh, our programs do exceed the 16 sports. And, you know, I do think that you're going to see over the coming weeks of some schools still continuing to drop sports as, as the, the coming weeks proceed. Okay, Shane, I think that's it. Um, appreciate your time today. All right. Thank you all.